All right, if you have watched Duck Dynasty, and let's face it, who hasn't? You will recognize our next guest, Missy Robertson. Now, Missy and her family have done more than practically anyone else I can think of to make life, family, faith, motherhood, fatherhood all popular again. Who, exactly, they made it popular. Who would have thought that those things could be popular in the America we live in today? But they have done it. What you may not know is that Missy herself has already been uniting women. She has a website, a jewelry website, Laminin. Go there. It's, it's not just that the jewelry is beautiful. The stories of what she's doing to unite women and bring them together to serve each other, that's what is truly inspiring. Welcome, Missy Robertson. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here all day and waiting for me. I think I'm the last one. So it's good to see that you haven't left and I appreciate that. You know, moms are here for one reason, to unite together for our families. That's why we're here. We've heard a lot of the same things today. I know I have. I think, wait a minute, I wanted to say that. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, she's saying what I want to say. And so many of the other speakers have said the same thing because we're here for the same purpose. There may be one thing, though, that you have not heard me say ever before. I'm here to make an announcement today. That announcement is that I, Missy Robertson, am a true feminist in every sense of the word. I am a woman, a female, in every sense of that word. I'm not ashamed of my body. I'm not ashamed that it can make and carry babies. I'm not ashamed of being a mom. I'm not ashamed of being a helpmate to my husband who is male. I stand for women's rights because there just so happens to be a thing called woman. And I am not ashamed to say that I was created by God Almighty to be a woman. When my family's reality television show became successful, people started asking me all kinds of questions everywhere I went. The number one question during that first year was, how did you get your children to be so respectful? It stunned me because my initial response was, they have no choice. <laughs> if they are disrespectful, there are consequences. Respect for others is learned at an early age. If it isn't, it is much harder to come by as an adult. My parents used to tell me, the teacher is always right. Have you heard that before? Even though they knew that teachers do sometimes make mistakes, my parents' point was this. Your teacher is the boss at school, worthy of your respect. You may not like him or her, but you will respect them. If I got in trouble at school, I got in trouble at home. The same exact thing went with the principal, my coach, the preacher, the police officer when I was pulled over for my first ticket. Respect. Hear me when I say there are exceptions. It is never right for an adult in any situation to abuse or harm a child, ever. Respect for the position of authority is what I'm addressing here. Respect for the position of authority is what is failing in our country today. Where there is no respect for authority, there is no respect for the rule of law. When the culture demands to turn against God's wisdom, we teach our children to respect the law, but trust God as the ultimate authority and establisher of governments. Romans 13, 1 says, the authorities that exist have been established by God. The reality is that our great nation was founded on Christian principles. 
George Washington said, it is impossible to rightly govern a nation without God and the Bible. Our Constitution ensures that when a person is accused of a crime, he or she is innocent until proven guilty. However, in this age of media overload where regurgitation of the same subject is broadcast 24-7, we're not allowed to form an opinion based on facts. We are demanded to choose a side based on gender, race, sexual orientation, or even gender confusion. This becomes the issue rather than the accused person's actions. And if we demand the person be held accountable for these actions, we are then accused of bigotry and racism. My husband and I teach our children that perception is not reality, but rather reality is reality. We teach them to respect reality. That reality is that we love God, we love all of those that he created, and we trust his standards. Romans 13.10 says, love is the fulfillment of the law. In a culture that says you deserve everything, we teach our children it's not about you. Respect reality. As our culture changes, we see our laws change. The First Amendment to the United States Constitution ensures, and I quote, there is no prohibition on the free exercise of religion. Yet, when our culture demanded that prayer be removed from our children's schools, that free exercise was stripped right out from under them. God is pro-prayer. To learn and understand the value of praying to our Father is education at its finest. Noah Webster, the author of the Webster Dictionary, said, education without the Bible is useless. Respect for reality. Our culture convinced us that a life growing inside a woman's belly is not yet human. Yet DNA technology proved that an untruth. We were told that they are not life until they are born. Yet ultrasound technology reveals a beating heart by eight weeks gestation. By 10 weeks, her fingers and toes are fully formed. By 13 weeks, your baby has its own unique fingerprints different from any other human. Isn't that amazing? These are just a few initial milestones that a mother celebrates as she awaits the arrival of her wanted child. But what about the unwanted child? That baby still achieves the exact same milestones. The only difference in the two babies is that one is wanted and the other is not. In a culture that discards life for the sake of convenience, we tell our children that life is infinitely precious. For the reality is that we are all made in the image of the Almighty God. Psalm 139, 13 and 15 says, You created me in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. Those who advocate pro-choice have taken a gift from God which is the freedom to choose, to justify the taking of the ultimate gift, which is life. Despite this, God still offers grace and newness to those who have made wrong choices. God is pro-choice, and he always chooses life. Respect reality. Our current law contradicts Jesus' definition of marriage, which says in Matthew 19, 4 to 5, at the beginning, the Creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And yet, this same Jesus offers forgiveness and transformation to those who trust him 
When society says you can bypass your genetic code and be whatever gender you want to be, we tell our children your gender is determined by DNA. That DNA was given specifically to you by the almighty creator of the universe. God is pro-sex. He created it. Jesus defined it. And families are formed from it. Respect reality. Our current culture has demanded the removal of all forms of Christian artifacts from government property. One pundit said, and I quote, I'm all about Jesus. I just don't want him on public property. God is... God is, period. Whether you want Jesus in the public square or not, whether you want him in your child's school or not, and whether you want him right here in the middle of the USA in Omaha, Nebraska or not, he's here. Jesus says in John 8:58. Before Abraham was born, I am. Paul warned Timothy over 2,000 years ago with these words. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. So, what are we really teaching our children? My husband and I teach our children that there is a God and you aren't him. <laughs> Respect reality. We must ask ourselves, are we going to let the culture change us or are we going to change the culture? Whatever happens around us, there is one thing that will never change. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We must teach our children to live by that truth. We must show our children that we as moms will stand up for that truth. And we must unite as moms to lead our children to the truth that truth is Jesus Christ. If America is to ever return to her glory, we as moms must unite, stand up, take back our homes, love our husbands, and protect our children. America shall return to her glory when we as moms acknowledge the one, the only one, who is worthy, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is the ultimate reality. Respect it. Thank you.